Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11 and in this video I seek to complete the moon missions that I started in the previous video. We had completed three of the missions and now I want to plan a flag on the... well first we have to save Ted Bree from orbit around the moon, then plan a flag on the moon, then dock two vessels on or around the moon. Well, we'll be saving Ted Bree but we're not going to be recovering Ted Bree so with this launch we will have done five and a half missions and then the other half is recovering Tedbury. Now, instead of just having a pod that would bring him back, I think we should start working on a more formalized system between Kerbin and the Moon. So we should have a Kerbin orbit station, perhaps, uh, that has people going uh, from Kerbin orbit down to Kerbin surface, and so there'll be a pod for that and uh, a nice recoverable pod. And then we also want some vehicle to transit between Earth and the Moon regularly. So, I say Earth and the Moon. Kerbin and the Moon, Kerbin and the Moon regularly. So we want a transit vessel. So we're gonna have a transportation system thing. But uh, first, let's get Tedbury. And Tedbury is in that little orbit there. So what we're going to do is um, I think I would, yeah, let's just go to the ascending node and bring that down from there. So, like that, and then you can see the descending node forms up there, right next to the periapsis. So we can probably, he's ahead though, that's annoying. Um, you know what, we can short circuit that a little bit. Because uh, otherwise it's going to take a lot of phasing to meet up with Ted Breeze. So what we can do is first pull our orbit down a little bit. And then do this. We really want Ted Breeze behind because we're going to be in the higher orbit. And so now here Ted Breeze is going to be behind. We can actually get it exact so that we have an encounter. Okay, there we have uh, an encounter, separation 1.1 kilometers. And that'll be fine. We don't even correct inclination like that because we're meeting at the descending node. And we will do this correction. So with this, we'll have a nice little station in low orbit where Tebri is right now. And we'll build upon it, even though the docking ports aren't the greatest. Uh, we are communication blind on this side though. So at our intersect point, we don't have communication, but well, hmm, this isn't a very, ah, there we go. Not a very good intersect location, but just a little bit off. Uh, come on, stop lagging. I don't want to meet him here since we'll still have a communication blackout. We'll just go ahead and force the issue. Up oh, over there at what is forming up as our ascending node there. Real solar system is actually more leisurely for the rendezvous. If I was this close, there was no, there's no reason for me to be going this fast. But because the orbital curvature is so quick, we have to use more propellant, ironically. Okay, so here we go, Tebri. Pilot. Tebri is a pilot. Well, actually, we want Ted Bree in the lander right now. We don't want him in the station portion. Okay, and board. All right, so now we've saved Ted Bree. Now plant a flag on the moon. So, this seems like it's a fairly low orbit. Let's boost it up just a little bit. We are at our... Periapsis, uh, sorry, apoapsis basically, so we can lift up our periapsis. Okay, basically 15 by 14. Alright, and I'll go ahead and top off all the baguettes. Even though I don't think we need that much delta V. Oh, we can't transfer fuel. Uh, oh, that's probably because I still got. Uh, crossfeed disabled. Let's see. Enable crossfeed. Now, can I transfer fuel? Nope. 
Um, I guess I don't have that unlocked. I mean, once we have that unlocked, we'll be able to do it, but we can't do it right now. That's fine, I guess. We have all the stuff we need. Yep. I haven't tried out that one kit and what it does, but we'll do that later. We don't have any need for it right now. Okay, decouple. Now, where should we land? Well, the lines of communication are this way. I mean, we don't really need to communicate back because we've got a Kerbal. So it's a choice between there and here. And I think this one... I mean, it's better for communication, but I don't think we really care about that. So maybe we should go just for this one. Since uh, it'll at least be daylight. And activating engine. I can't stage. That's strange. Oh, I can activate engine like this. No, that was auto strut. Okay. Beats me. All right. Okay, we are on a descent path. That's a rugged crater we've got there, huh? Maybe if we land over here, it'd be okay. We got oodles of Delta V. We could put more on this lander. But it might be good to be able to change our inclination and such to hit different targets on the moon. Like, if we wanted to go polar, I think we have enough Delta V that even from the station we can go polar. I don't want to go into this crater here. And we can certainly do pinpoint landings wherever if we build a base. Okay, here we are coming down. Okay, and landing. All right, so crew report. Keep for seismic accelerometer data. Keep log pressure data. Keep. We'll have to remember to get Tedbury to pick all this stuff up. Keep. Okay. So EVA report. Keep and take surface sample. Always like doing that from the ladder. Okay, Ted Bree at the far side crater. Ah, not rater, crater. What a rescue. Okay. Okay, grab. Board. Okay, I think we've got all the things. We might as well wait for Moon Station to come around, though. That's one good thing about landing in uh, in daylight. You can wait. Though so probably with all that electric charge on here, we wouldn't have lost our electric charge in this kind of time. Okay. Well, we wiggled a bit. But, yeah, let's go and let's aim for target directly. All right, all tucked in. Well, everything is coming together. A sending node right there. If we could sort of meet up with it right there, that'd be nice. Yeah, okay, okay, slow down, slow down. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and overdo it. <laughs> Alright. 1.7 kilometers is fine. Okay. So, there's curb and rise. And let's match with the target here. 
Okay. So we planted the flag, now we're docking the two vessels. Let's see how little monopropellant I need. Okay, set docking, set docking port as a target. I'll just go ahead and use RCS now. Okay, so then we sort of make ourselves parallel to our target in all sorts of ways. So I'm just drawing a line from myself and on the target's axis and making sure they're parallel and then we move the prograde vector so it's on the opposite side of the target vector. I could have done it with less mob propellant, but I used the mob propellant to slow down at the last bit, which wasn't strictly necessary. Okay, the magnetism is really powerful around here, but there we are. We have docked, and... Huh? Why didn't it fulfill? Attach two different vessels together near the moon with a docking port or claw to achieve this goal. I guess I couldn't have launched them. I will then fulfill it with the next thing, which is uh, the Kerbin Moon Transfer Vehicle. That's fine. I guess because these were launched together, they don't count. I'll accept that. That's fine. We're planning to do something else anyway. So Tebri's gonna have to hang out. Let's build the Kerbin Orbit Station, and it'll, I will launch it with a return pod, and yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so in the general spirit of packaging things up, I think I'm going to put together the transfer vessel from Earth to Moon, the capsule or spacecraft that's going to bring people back down from Kerbin Orbit and the Kerbin Orbit Station all together. Uh, first thing though, I want to take advantage of the rocket that we use to launch Moon Station and we're going to just go ahead and sub-assembly this fellow. Um, shall we call it uh, pseudo SLS? Sort of... yeah, let's go with that. Mini SLS. Mini SLS. It's got four nozzles. I mean, it's close. I mean, it's not the best analogy, but it's okay. Uh, so we'll use that and so its capability to the moon was 12 tons. Let's keep that in mind. Well, we don't need to send it to the moon though. But anyway, uh, we'll figure it out. So first, a little transfer pod that is going to bring people to the moon and back. Maybe the inline cockpit is actually pretty heavy. There's that one cabin, the Mark 1 cabin. Where is that? There it is. Mark 1 crew cabin. That's what I want. We could possibly use um, this, this lander can too, but it's a little bit heavier. But if we make it the rover variant, it's sort of cute. It's sort of like a bus. I like the idea of having a bus, but it's not the most convenient thing and it's still heavier than the other cabins. So we're going to go ahead and use the Mark 1 crew cabin. Maybe a cluster of baguettes will make this look better. And let's see. This is 90. A bunch of them could probably do a better job. Let me put some Oscar B's around the center line. And we can put a bunch of these guys. Okay, and of course the little RCS ports. You can see why I was enthusiastic about them. I, I probably never have to use this. Well, I mean, unless we're going to do something huge. But in general, these are fine. That'll work with our Kerbin Orbit satellites. And that's a 50 meters per second chunk of Delta V that we lose, though. 
You know what, if we put that there, maybe we should just have one solar panel on this side to counterbalance. And we'll have an extendable one, 0.05 tons. It'll be a little bit better balanced if I put this battery on. Maybe we should change this up a little bit. I'm gonna tuck the battery in somewhat. Move that up. And we can dump those batteries. I really didn't think we needed that many of the RCS tanks, so we'll just have two up here. And we'll have one more battery pack to really get the balance right. And so all the stuff on this side will balance the antenna properly. Never turned on the lights on the moon station. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now we've got the return pod to think about. And how ostentatious do we want that? Do we want two people? Do we want three people? I think it makes sense at this point to keep it to two people. Because we've got a two-person Mark One crew cabin. And I'm just going to put it... I think we can do this and just have it decouple like that. And this has a... No, it does not have a built-in heat shield, so... We do have to add that in, and it's 1.875. But we definitely don't need that much ablator. So... I know we could probably have it survive without any heat shield at all. That's fine. I'm not going to do it, but <laughs> I understand. Um, it doesn't have any internal mob propellant, which is interesting. It probably... We could just use mob propellant to back... Uh, to deorbit as well. Um, I need to figure out exactly how much we would need. I want 200 meters per second on this return pod. So I need... 0.18 tons of fuel is what I get and that means six of these or maybe two of these I think I'm gonna go with six of these to match the hex here it's a little bit awkward though definitely a little bit awkward I'm gonna tuck it in <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna clip it a little bit here for style not for functionality or anything. We need parachutes too. Well, I don't know exactly how I feel about that. Let's put the thrusters on. Okay, well I hope the hatches aren't obstructed. Though, we're docking, so presumably the Kerbals can go directly into the thing. I could put a service module on here, but then it'd be wasted, right? This will be completely recoverable. If we have enough propellants on here to deorbit, which I think we do, this would be sufficient. It's going directly down from orbit. I don't think we need more than 200 electric charge, so I'm not going to put solar panels. I don't think that's necessary. If we need to put a new pod onto the station, uh, it's the bottom module will have to have some solar panels or something, maybe. Uh, but Right now, I'm going to build the rest of the station. So, uh, one thing I'm going to do is put struts. We haven't unlocked struts yet. Finally, it's happening. We're, we're doing struts. Uh, we might want a fairing. <laughs> okay, so. Then we have our actual station, which is going to be... Well, uh, let's let's get the crew module for the station first. We want, unfortunately, these Clampertron Junior docking ports. I don't want the shroud. So we're gonna have a crew pod. We're gonna have some fuel replenishment tank. Oh, we, we don't strictly need, need that, actually. That doesn't leave a whole lot of room for solar panels, but actually we'll just build that into the stage. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pull our launcher out here, and we're only 13.35 tons, and the launcher could send 12 to the moon. 
So we'll have plenty of spare delta v. And what we're going to do is, we're not actually going to... I don't know if we should keep the fairing piece. Maybe we should. We don't need the decoupler though. Maybe we should just keep stick with the fairing. That's not too bad. It's poking out a little bit though. Then we don't need a nose cone like this, I guess. I tried to make it streamlined, but let's face it, this is gonna be a mess <laughs> if we try and uh, leave it to the airstream. Uh, so what's gonna happen is this whole business is gonna get into orbit all together. And it'll just be one big fuel tank. You know what, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense having this tank here anyway. So yeah, why don't we just have these docking ports down here too. So we'll have small ones here, big ones. Uh, we'll have the solar panels all the way down here. One we'll of the big ones sort of in the middle here. Not really great for crew transfer since they're fuel tanks. I don't know. It's a it's a thought. But we'll have we'll have fuel left over to refuel stuff once we get into orbit. Now what we won't have is the RCS fuel to refuel stuff, so we should put some of those tanks on. So this whole thing is gonna be the station. Oh, we are over mass. Hmm. Now what can we do about that? I guess initially we don't have to have all the mod propellant. Uh, well, it's... Okay, initially we don't have to have all the SRB propellant. That'll be more efficient than anything else to get rid of. Okay, so this is... Well, Kerbin Station. <laughs> it's not the best Kerbin Station ever, but... It's got a lot of things going for it, let's put it that way. Uh, nobody on it. Yeah, yep, it's all clear. And we probably should have some supplementary comms. Let's put this commutatron. We'll just have one, and we'll have it opposite the hatch side. Uh, but then it, I hate that flag being asymmetrical. It sucks. Well, we're going to have to get rid of the flag. Okay. Let's see how it goes. I guess we can launch at night. Um, I feel like some strutting is in order. Let me go back to the VAB. They're already going to start out bad. Uh, so, um, recover. I think they separated cleanly enough last time. It was close, but they separated. I forget exactly which way whether it was which way I should shift it as far as their center of mass. And I don't know the center mass location on the SRBs right now, so anyway, we we're gonna leave it be since it worked last time. And we're just gonna auto strut. Though uh, auto strutting might actually and that's the grandparent part for these might actually complicate things. This let's have it auto strut to yeah, root part, sure, why not? Uh, let's have uh, this tank auto strut to root part. Well, the boosters aren't tilting in a weird way. So that's a start. Throttle up, that's ASM, and launch. Okay, a little bit steep, but we're looking good. Okay, separation. Yeah, so they need to be shifted down a bit. I think we can dump the fairing now. Very monolithic kind of station. Okay, well that's a hundred kilometers and let's check. We should have Comsat 4 there helping us out at Apoapsis. And we are going to get our antennae out, otherwise communicating with Comsat 4 won't necessarily be easy. We should have probably put a controller on the station. 
we don't strictly speaking have a controller with the hitchhiker storage container do we that's gonna be problematic um it doesn't say anything about reaction wheel torque so wait that was on time warp though nope it doesn't have a reaction wheel so that's a bit of a problem we might have to put like a z1 truss on <laughs> to uh provide reaction wheel torque Okay, uh, 101 by 98, we'll keep it there. Okay, so beyond this, we want to transfer and we should separate off the pod now, assuming my assumption that the docking ports will work for that happen. Couple, yep, and the struts go away, good times. So this has its antenna out already. And just RCS puff a little bit. Activate the engine. Okay, let's plot our transfer and see if the whole system works. The moon bus is away. We're probably we're really low with the station. Moon station. We should mark it as a station too. A make course adjustment would be nice for this. I'll just, uh, yeah, we'll plot that. And do we have enough delta V to make the full round? Remember, we don't have a heat shield to bring ourselves back into low carbon orbit, so we're doing that manually with the thrust. Okay, and go. And stop. Yeah, <laughs> that's quite enough of that. All right. Maybe if we get into a very loose orbit, we can catch it on the next round. It's good to catch up to it on this side because we definitely have a communication line back to Kerbin. Well, we've captured. Let me pass this point here. And, okay, that target position marker is over there. We just want to bring it down. Let's go one more round. And maybe one more. Okay, that'll do. I think we can manage that in time. Uh, two hours, not that long. And I think that'll be an okay orientation for the sun right now. We're gonna lose power over here, maybe. But, nope, it's, it's pretty okay. Okay, there's the station. This time we should get the docking contract done. Okay, no, 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 no. Uh, definitely not, definitely not. Okay, and let's just pause right here. to contemplate the situation. Uh, we need to dock there. And maybe we don't have to retract stuff. So I'm just getting parallel now. Uh, this way. Okay, I want my sail, my solar panel, which I sort of think of as a sail, to... Whoop, on this side. Okay, so that's looking parallel on this axis. Let's see. That's not bad. I think we can go with that. Yeah, wow. It's really vigorous. It's actually pretty scary, the magnetism. Can we tweak the magnetism on? Uh, yeah, docking acquire force. I should tweak that down a bit. It worries me. Okay, transfer crew. Transfer. Oh, wait. Uh, let's not do it that way just yet. Um, let's have Tebri EVA grab the... Take the data. Only three? Surface sample. Well, I guess so. Um... 
But there's no real hatch for Tebri to get into, though. So, uh, but I think we can transfer data through, can we? Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, transfer crew, transfer into there. And can we move data? <laughs> uh, forget how that works. I think there's some way to move data, but I forget how it is. So let's just keep it there. Maybe we'll add that science lab to this, but we can transmit the crew report and the EVA report. Those don't have any benefit to recovery. We'll just keep the surface sample here for now. Okay, so, but the main thing is, is Tebri here? Well, it looks like he's in there. Yep. So let's see about bringing Tebri back. It's close. Uh, now that we've got Tebri in, we've got his mass too. So we not only want to break orbit here, but we have to go all the way back and rendezvous with the other stations. So at least we've got the stations in equatorial orbits. That helps. Makes it much less painful. I think I'll probably do some of this with the RCS. I don't know how much RCS Delta V we're carrying. So we want that at 100. And Kerbin Station ship is our target. Oh, while we're here, let's change that to station. Can Tedbury not control it when we have uh, no probe control? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let me test it right now. Turn RCS off. No. So Tedbury can't actually control this at all, even though Tedbury's a pilot. But that's all right. By the time we get to our node, we'll have communication. We need more commsats around the moon. I'm going to start doing the burn right now with the RCS. And we'll see how much mileage we get out of that. I just want to use it up so that we have more delta V with the spark. Also, it's probably safer to use the RCS right around the station for now. Okay, I'll keep the RCS burning, but we'll do the burn at the correct burn time here. Oh, uh, that's off now. Okay. Alright, so what's our situation? Uh, I can't see. Okay, 51. Let's use the RCS to bring that to where it ought to be. But 922 meters per second only. It's a complicated way to get Tebri back, but sort of like a concept test for the eventual moon transportation system. Okay, well, we'll need some communications at periapsis. Let's see whether we've got any. It's a bit of a flaw that we've got a pod that Tebri can't control. Well, we, we might be bouncing a signal all the way to the moon. No, we've got... We've got Comsat 5 there, working with us. Alright, let's start the burn. Upgrade. And we're interested to bring the orbit down such that we get an encounter with the station. We're getting a little bit far away from periapsis though. Okay, uh, 440 I can deal with, I think. Three kilometers. I'll take it. It's still cutting it close, but we can manage it, I think. Oh, no. I'm just trying to get that separation distance down. Oh, that doesn't seem to work very well. Really cutting it close, though. Okay, let's stop it here. And now we'll just use RCS. 
I guess at any given time, either the lander or that return craft are going to be attached to the station. So maybe we won't need another controller or anything. Again, these mod propellant efficient docking maneuvers are brought to you by Tiny RCS Thrusters. We got the docking contract done, yeah? Okay. I mean, worried for a sec there, it didn't have it checked off, but now it does. Okay, wow, that magnetism. Alright! Okay, so let's transfer Tebri from here to that. Yes, we could EVA him, but nah. Alright, and now we want to... I did put a docking port right there, right? I guess I can't quite grab it right now. Shoot. Uh, there it is. Okay. Decouple. Whoa, that's a lot of impulse. Okay, so Tebri's over here. And we've got the mon propellant, we've got some ablator, we've got electric charge. Let's see if we can bring Tebri home and as close to home as possible. So, the Space Center is just entering daylight there. And we'll do a normal sort of... Yeah, I guess we'll do a normal sort of deorbit at the Woomerang launch, launch site and see how that goes. Okay. So, though this deorbit is going to take a lot more time because it's RCS based. A lot, lot more time. But that just means we'll end up in the water to the east of the KSC, so I guess it's alright. Maybe for this, we might want more powerful RCS thrusters. Maybe the unidirectional ones. Uh, uh, but we need these sort of for docking if we want to replace the pod, uh, get the pod back on there. It's a toss up. We might not want to use this pod again. I'll have to think about it. I mean, I packed enough fuel so that I could rendezvous with the station again and come back. Was the intention with the 200 meters per second. I think I'll go for a slightly lower periapsis given the situation. Since we've taken so long to do the burn. Well, you can see where the periapsis has ended up. It's really far away. Yeah, maybe we need to even bring it down steeper. But there's a limit. I didn't... Well, even that ablator is probably good enough to come back from the moon with. So eh, it's probably not that bad. Okay, I'll go with this 21.7 kilometers. Should work on more precision approaches to the KSC. Definitely overshooting here. And yeah, we can lighten up the later as usual. That's a fluffy cloud layer right there. Okay, full parachute deployment brings us to... It's not that overdone, the parachutes. 5.6 is not, like, crazy. Okay, and... Splashdown! Okay, we are buoyant. Recover vessel. So, there you have it. A bit of a convoluted return for Ted Bree at the end, but... Uh, we managed all the contracts. Yes, there we go. We got that checked off. And we've got a little mini moon transportation system in the works. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.